All right, what's up guys, been a while. But today we are making a very, very, very simple game using the Unity game engine. Some preface on Unity, it's an amazing free game engine as long as you're uh, an individual working on personal projects. I think it's like once you make uh, over $100,000 on a game, you need to start paying for it. So it's great for people that are just getting into it. It's been used by many professional studios to make some really amazing games. Some of my favorites being Hollow Knight, an indie game called Kentucky Route Zero, a lot of people know Code. Head. And if you look through, the list is only getting bigger and bigger of the, the brands, the companies that are picking up Unity. So, fair warning, this is not an original project. It's actually a tutorial that Unity has on their own website full of other tutorials for how to start using their uh, their software. For, for me and for my students, Unity's own tutorial is a little coding heavy. And I am not a computer science uh, teacher. I'm not a computer science Whiz, I only know like a, a little bit of HTML. I'm planning on just going through this uh, at, from a purely art standpoint. If you're interested in learning more about the computer science side and the coding side, it's there. Now, I have a few other tutorials on Unity that are now getting pretty old. I think they're about four years old at this point, so I might be updating those as well too. But let's get into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. Here in the hub, I'm gonna make sure that I'm picking a 3D core, but there are a lot of other templates that I would encourage you to play around with just to learn Unity. But we're we'll starting with the 3D core. I'm gonna go ahead and name this roll a ball. And I'll say tutorial. Uh, putting it in my user folder is okay, and I'll go ahead and hit create project. Now, I tell my students all the time that a video game is essentially one folder with many files inside of that folder. Those files are typically called assets, and we can make assets in many other software, such as Photoshop, Blender, any, any art making software. But what's really important is the file management, making sure that we're setting up our folders in a very specific structure because the C Sharp code is going to be looking for those files and those file names. Let's give Unity a minute to load. All right, here we are in our uh, fresh 3D core template scene. A few things that we can just get adjusted to right away. Over here, we have what's called the hierarchy. It's similar to the scene collection in Blender. This is essentially where all of our files are going to be shown. Down here, though, we do have our assets manager and our file browser, and it's going to be really important to us. This is our actual window. Um, on a Mac, I'm pressing the Option or the Alt key and clicking to strafe around. There are some basic 3D modeling hotkeys to use in Unity. I just put my left hand on the Q, W, E, R keys on the keyboard because Q is the hand tool, W is the move tool, E is the rotate tool, and R is the scale tool. But let's go ahead and get started on that file management that I was talking about. Here in our scene collection, I can open scenes and think of a scene as an individual level, right? We're only going to be working with one scene for now. Let's create some new folders. I'm going to start by creating a folder for any materials. I'm calling it materials. I'm creating another new folder. Right click, create folder. Uh, let's put our scripts in this one. I have some scripts that I have provided down in the description. It's on a Google Drive folder. Again, I'm not a computer science major, so just use those and I'll open them up and, and show some stuff. One more folder to create, we're going to call this prefabs, which is a short for prefabricated object. And we'll get into what that actually means later. So let's start making some stuff. I like to just create stuff by right clicking in the hierarchy, 3D object plane this is going to be our ground so right away it's going to be really important to zoom in there to name this ground right i like to keep things clean otherwise we start getting plane plane two plane three let's make this a little bit bigger i'm going to put it at two in the x and two on the z just so it uh, scales up uh in unity the y axis is up and down right let's go ahead and give it a material in my materials folder i'm going to right click create new i'm sorry create material name this ground because this is going to be my ground material and over here i can change the albedo color the albedo is simply the surface color of a basic material that's all we're getting into today Make it blue. once i have that it's really easy to just click and drag and drop that cool let's build some walls i'm gonna right click create 3d object cube boom right there because I scaled the plane to two on the uh, Z axis, I can put the scale of the cube to 20, and now that fits, right? So if we click on it, again, we have our move tool up here. It's W on the keyboard. Real quick trick, if you press and hold V on the keyboard while you're moving something, it snaps your vertices to other vertices in your scene. So if I zoom out real quick, press V, there I go. <clears throat> Over here, I'll go ahead and name that cube. If you press return or enter on the keyboard, it lets you rename things real quickly. Let's name that wall. To duplicate on a Mac, Command-D, Control-D on a PC. 
So let's go ahead and duplicate our walls. Once again, pressing V and placing that somewhere in my scene. Boom. I'm gonna create some uh, quick walls. And boom, we have our simple arena. I rotated the uh, other walls just by 90 degrees on the Y. Let's go ahead and clean this up. I've already got now like three just or four blank walls sitting here. We can create a folder really easily by right clicking and creating an empty. This is simply like an empty placeholder object. I'm gonna name it walls, plural. And then what I can do, click one wall, hold shift, click the bottom wall and drag and drop it into the empty. And now the empty has become this little folder that lets me clean up my hierarchy. Boom, let's go ahead and create the player. Right click, 3D object, and it's a sphere. Now if you look, at any time you can click on any object and press F on your keyboard, and that will find or center your camera on that object. It's really useful. If you look, because it came in at 000, you do wanna make sure your objects are coming in on origin at 000. It's in, it's in between the plane, it's kind of floating there, so I actually could, I'm going to put it at 0.5 on the Y, so it's sitting flat on the ground there. Boom. Now I got my player. Let's give it a different color. Right click, create, material. Again, I'm in my materials folder, I'm not just creating this anywhere randomly. Let's name this player. Uh, for my color, maybe I'll make that a nice magenta. Boom. Drag and drop it on the player. And then I will also be adding or renaming my sphere to be player. Cool, so we got that. Let's go ahead and start making things move. So by the end of this tutorial, you have something that is playable, right? Let's go into our scripts folder that we made. And in the link down below, I've got a Google Drive file that's gonna link you to these six scripts that I have pre-prepared. Some of them came from Unity and I tweaked them a little bit. Other ones I had former students uh, help me put together. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these, I click one, hold shift, click the other, and drag and drop them into my scene. It's important that these aren't living in your downloads on your computer because Unity's gonna need to know where they exist. Now I've got some scripts. I'm gonna use Visual Studio to edit. It's one of the uh, default ones, or default script editors for Unity. If you go to Unity Preferences, you can make sure in external tools that your external script editor is Visual Studio. Visual Studio is another free one if you don't have that downloaded. It's it's a really nice script editor. Let's go ahead and open up the player controller script. Now, I've said it a few times already, I am not a computer science teacher. I only know a little bit of coding, but I can look at a piece of code and try to infer what it actually means. Let's do that together. All right, so I'm in Visual Studio. I double clicked that file in Unity and it opened up in Visual Studio. So we got 50 lines of code here. Um, these first few lines simply say, hey, this script is using the Unity engine. Cool, that's good for us. There are some things that it's gonna show us that it's showing something like count text and win text. I see, uh, I see down here that it's got some movement inputs that if you input horizontal or vertical movement, it will mo move it along an axis, add some force to it. I see something about pickups here. Let's get into that in the part two video. And then, and then we've got some count text and win text. Uh, let's, let's get into the, uh, picking up stuff and winning the game in in the next video. What we're simply gonna do in this video is on our player, we are first off gonna give it a rigid body, which is a physic com physics component. If you click add component, it is a physics component that gives it actual, the ball, the player actual physics so it can roll around and interact with things in our scene. Just a simple rigid body, right? After we give it a rigid body, we're gonna add a script. And as long as you put your scripts in a folder, in your folder that I showed you to create, you can click scripts right here, and add player controller. And we've got some settings we can change here. Defaults to zero speed. I'm gonna put mine around 10. Um, I recommend or suggest to play around with this experiment with what speed is gonna be good for your game or fun to play. Now, if I've done everything correctly, we can go into play test mode or play mode. I click on the play button at the top. And if I press my arrow keys, look at that. I've got a ball that I am moving around. I'm using my arrow keys. You can also use WASD. Now let's set up the camera. Let's do that one. Let's do this is one more thing for uh, for this part one video. Unity comes in default with a main camera. If I select it, you can see what that camera sees. Now that's a little rough of an angle, so I'm gonna actually move that camera up on the y-axis and then rotate it. Press an E on my keyboard, or click on this tool right here. Rotate it on the x-axis to point down. I'll press W to move it up a little bit, maybe even move it a little bit closer to my player. Cool, so now if I hit play, go back to my play test mode, I can see things a little bit better. 
but the next thing I want to do is make ball or the camera follow the ball. Real quick too, um, when I'm in playtest mode, the play button is highlighted. You can make edits while you're in playtest mode, but they do not save. So if you're trying to make permanent edits, let's unclick the uh, play button and go back to our scene. Here's our, what our scene looks like, our editing window right here. Here's our game window that, of what the game is actually going to look like. Scene, game. Scene is for edits, game is for playtest. So, <clears throat> on my camera, I have another script that we added that we're going to add another com or add a component onto the camera. Scripts, and it's camera controller. This camera controller script, if you open it up, simply says that, hey, anytime the player is offset, the camera will offset the same exact way. We just need to designate the player. You can drag and drop, or you can click on this little circle, and as long as you named things, hey, look, it's really easy to find player. Boom. I named that player, right? So, so that all shows correctly. Now if I hit play, the camera will follow the movements of my ball. All right, so let's, that's gonna wrap it up for part one. Um, I don't wanna make these videos too long. I wanna make them pretty easy to digest. Um, on part two, let's add some pickups and then let's add some uh, text to show how many pickups you have and how many pickups you need to win the game. Cool, hopefully this was easy to follow along. Thanks for watching.